Good afternoon. I am Paula Broadnax, and joining me today is Gwendolyn Murphy. We call her Gwen Murphy, and she's joining us from Wilmington, North Carolina. Hey, Gwen. Hello there. <laughs> welcome, welcome, and thank you, thank you, thank you. You are a perseverer, a mm -hmm. driver by all means. <laughs> We won't go into those details, but we do not give up, do we, girl? Oh, no. Never, never, never. We do not give That's up. Right. Persevere. That's right. Well, again, we are coming to you this afternoon to share some thoughts with you as breast cancer survivors. Both Gwen and I are survivors, and we are breast cancer advocates. Our goal and our mission is to share information, inspiration, encouragement, uh, to all that have a need to know and that are willing to listen. Uh, we believe that breast cancer awareness is a 365 day event, not just a month in October, until a cure is found. And so, as we move about um, sharing our information, we want to encourage those that are listening, not only to receive the information, but to apply it. Information does us no good if it's, not, if it's not applied. So applied information is power. Applied information. And early detection is the key. I'd like to share just briefly uh, how we got to the point of the publication of our book, We Survive to Thrive. As I mentioned, I am a breast cancer survivor. And it will be uh, 18 years, almost to the day, in a, in a few I think in a few weeks, 18 years that God has allowed me to be here to give my testimony and to show others that there is hope. That, you know, uh, a breast cancer diagnosis is not a death, death sentence. And so with that, I had the opportunity or took the opportunity to document my journey in a book called Dreams, Hopes, and Possibilities. And so that book's tell, book tells about uh, my journey through the cancer treatment, but it goes beyond that, I think, to give people inspiration and, and encouragement to live out the dream that they may have. I think we all have something that's been tucked in our heart. It was given to us when we were born. And when we identify that and step out on faith a lot of times to make it a reality, that is when we're truly living on purpose. So as I move through and continue to move through on my journey, I meet phenomenal people, women like Miss Gwen Murphy, who you will hear from in just a moment, but ladies that have stories that are, and I, and I, I won't say stories, I'm going to call them testimonies because these are truths. These aren't stories as we might know them. They are testimonies. They are testament. And so uh, I'm meeting all these phenomenal women. And last year, uh, a group of them agreed to give their stories or their testaments in a publication called We Survive to Thrive. And so the book, even though written by breast cancer survivors, is um, com it, it encompasses life lessons that we all can learn from and, and live by because most of us have been through some type of trial or tribulation. And if you haven't, you're truly blessed. And you just hold on because something's liable to happen uh, to us that kind of give us a little dip in the road, you know? And uh, when those dips come, there it's not the end. There are things that we can do. There are ways that we can hold on to get through them. And so the book uh, includes how these women have made it through. We survive to thrive. So at this point, I'd like for Gwen as one of the contributing authors to We Survive to Thrive, to tell the listening audience uh, a little bit about uh, her title. Her title in her chapter is called, I Wouldn't Take Nothing for My Journey Now. And so, Gwen, if you will, please tell how and why you took that title for your chapter in the book. Okay. Um I chose that title, uh, as we most of us know, that is a Negro spiritual. I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. And, and um, I chose that title because although this is not a journey I would have chosen to take, 
I took it and I think it made me a better person for having taken this journey. Uh, Go on, I'm sorry. Well, uh, it's about taking what God hands out to you and using it to grow, using it to grow your mind, body, and soul. Oh, that's it. I'll shut up now. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I love that title. I love that title. And I think what I hear you saying, because I feel the same way, I wouldn't take anything from my journey either, because it's made me the woman that I am today. Without having gone through what we have gone through, we wouldn't be the women we are, would you say? We would be lesser than what God intended us to be. All right. That that journey, the journey that all of us in this book took is one that a lot of people don't get to take that journey or if they take that journey, they don't come, you know, they, it, it may be fatal for them, but we live through something that a lot of people don't live through and we live to tell it and to try to help other people get through the, what we went through. Uh, uh, and not only just breast cancer, but anything. I feel like this book is for anyone who has been through something life altering or life changing. This book yes. can help anyone on any sort of journey that they're on. Absolutely. That is so true. We are beyond survivors. We are thrivers. We are thrivers. Well, Gwen, why don't you tell uh, the listening audience a little bit about your story without giving away the whole book, okay? Okay. Okay. Uh, My name is Gwen Murphy. I am 63 years old. I survived bouts with cancer twice, once in 2002 and once in 2004. Um, I had a particularly aggressive form of breast cancer. I had triple negative breast cancer. Uh, The first time I opted for a lumpectomy, the second time I opted for a right breast mastectomy. Um, Along this journey, I met, and I'm still meeting, strategically placed angels along the way on this journey. People that I feel like I didn't give enough credit to in the book, but my oncologist, Dr. Peter Ungaro, my surgeon, Dr. Robert Cortina, my chemo nurse, Melinda, all these were strategic angels along this journey that helped me get through all God placed I'm positive of to help me get through this journey. Um, as I went through cancer twice, I went through chemo, radiation, the whole nine yards. I went through high points, low points, depression, feeling sorry for myself, the whole gambit of emotions. But with God's help and his strategic angel's help, I, I hopefully triumphed. I'm a 10 year survivor, so. Well, I would call that being triumphant to say the least. Amen. 10 years survivorship is triumphant yes absolutely absolutely Gwen okay so we entitled our book we survived to thrive so would you please share uh, what the title means to you or maybe the difference to you between surviving versus thriving well surviving is what I feel like I was doing before my diagnosis just day after day, same old Monday, not appreciative of all the blessings that I had, but that's surviving, just just living, just not being appreciative and, and taking the opportunity to thank God and to, you know, the, to help your fellow man or to interact or whatever with your fellow man. But thriving is just that. It's it's taking the triumphs and the hardships and, and the good things and the bad thing, everything, and just using it to learn from. That's what uh, thriving is, using your experiences, whether good or bad, to learn from those experiences and to be happy and pleased and satisfied with whatever is doled out to you because it's a blessing to be on this earth at all because there's so many that are not here and, and and they don't have a, a chance to to be thankful for the thriving that we we have every day we open our eyes. I think that was well said, very well said. I mean, as a thriver, we are milking life for everything that is worth. Tomorrow's not promised, and we understand that, do we not? Uh, we understand. That's right. We understand, and. Uh, 
I think one of the elders, may have been my mama, said this, uh, you can't really live until you're prepared to die. And where I was, when I was diagnosed, that prepared me maybe to leave here, but I'm still here. So I'm ready now <laughs> when, he, when he gets ready to call me home, but there's still work for me to do because I'm still here. So as, as I and as you go through each day, it's an opportunity to, to learn something each day, to give something to someone, to share, to help somebody each day, you know? Uh, and in doing that, that's when our lives are rich and full. That's when we really are thriving. And uh, thank you. You, you, you really put, uh, said that well, Gwen. All right, I'd like to ask you then, um, I think we can agree that, and, and we said that we're not the same women we no. are now no. as, we had, as we were then. So no. would you please um, maybe share how your journey has impacted your entire being, your mind, your body, and spirit. So as a result of the cancer uh, journey, uh, how has your mind changed? How has it changed your mind? How has it changed how you uh, uh, love this body? And how has it changed your spirit? Please. Okay. This journey has changed my mind. Is I think I feel like I'm more focused, more focused on um, on what's important, really. More focused on uh, on a spiritual connection that's deep and meaningful. I've always felt like I was a a uh, spiritual person, but not a religious person. Uh, I don't care much for the trappings of religion, the rites and rituals, but I care about the connection that you have with our, that people have with their Lord and Father Jesus Christ. I mean, it's, my mind is more focused. I say that's how that experience changed my mind. I'm more focused and I think I'm a little bit more laid back. I was what you call a type A personality before the diagnosis. One of these people that thought they had to do everything for everybody and just be there, you know, and, and take no time for yourself, no time to reflect, no time to do anything, but just, you know, be there for everybody else, not taking time for yourself. I think this, that experience with the cancer has taught me to be more there for myself. Be there for other people, but be there for yourself first. Um, uh, and okay, that's my body. I am more conscientious about exercise. Now, right now, my treadmill's on the fritz, but now my means of exercise is a hula hoop. Until I can get another treadmill, I am hula hoop. Sometimes my husband walks in the room and looks at me like I'm nuts, but exercise is important. Being stagnant, mind or body, is, is not good. The older we get, our junk wears out. So we need to we, we need to exercise and be active, walking, biking, whatever, and eating. We need to watch the fried chicken and collard greens. I love fried chicken and collard greens as much as the next person, but we need to eat more fruits and salads, drink more water. Just treat your body as what it is, a temple. Uh, and I feel like I'm treating my body more like a temple. Okay, uh, mind, body, and soul. Um, my soul is more at peace now. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm human. I have my conflicts within, but I'm more at peace and can be more peaceful, uh, be a more peaceful person that doesn't have to run here, there, and yonder for, set, for, you know, for satisfaction. I can open a good book or read a good book or whatever and be satisfied and, 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 and seeing something heartwarming, stuff, stuff like that, just everything seems to touch my soul now, little things that I didn't notice before. They seem to, you know, touch my soul more. So that's how this diagnosis has Im impacted me, mind, body, and soul. That was beautiful. And you are beautiful. Oh, thank oh my you. gosh, that was, <laughs> that was so well said. So well said. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Goodness. And it's All a right, well, the Lord put me, put you in my life. That's one of my major blessings, and you are definitely a strategically placed angel. Oh, well, that flows both ways, sweetness. I can't wait to meet you personally so I can give me a good old hug. I know. I'm a hugger too. I can't wait either. 
<laughs> and that's what this journey has done. As I said earlier, uh, the people that have crossed my paths, the Gwen Murphys and the others, there's been an immediate connection. It's like we are best friends, but we are soul sisters. We've been on journeys that are similar in one aspect, but very different. But that similarity is a tight, tight connection that we can hold on to and grow. And that's what's, that's what's happening. And that's what's happened uh, with this book. Uh, and the people that have come through uh, uh, our way and that have contributed to it. And I am truly grateful for you angels, Gwen, and you are one of mine. Thank you for being here. You're welcome. All right, and Gwen, I guess we would close by uh, asking you, if you would, to uh, just give maybe a couple of tips that you would like to leave uh, with the listening audience, things maybe you wish you had known or something you would like for them to know. Okay. Uh, just what this would you like to leave with them? Okay, first of all, a cancer diagnosis, and I think you said this earlier, is not a death sentence. I mean, caught early enough, you can survive. Second of all, when you, if you do have to go to a doctor, take someone with you. You are not in your most positive place when you get a diagnosis of cancer. So take a friend, take a loved one, take somebody with you. Don't go alone. Um, and uh, oh, don't let a doctor or any other health professional foo-foo your concerns. If you have a concern about something on your body that you don't think needs to be on your body or happening within your body, go get a second opinion. Always get a second opinion if you're not truly satisfied with the first. Um, and that's about it. And just, I don't know, stay positive, ask the father for guidance. I mean, in any situation, not just breast cancer. So that's excellent. 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 Those are great tips, great tips. And as we do these interviews, we continue to hear some of the same things. The, what, what you have said are some of the tips that we have all used to journey through and it worked for us and we believe that these things can inspire encourage and form others as they go through as well thank you so much thank you for the opportunity all right and so you all if you have not already purchased your copy of our book again it's called we survive to thrive it is available on we survive to thrive Dot com as well as on amazon.com so we hope you'll get your copy and after you read it we'd appreciate it if you would leave us your comments your feedback on amazon.com we need to improve our ratings and you you can help us to do that so again i'd like to thank Gwen murphy from wilmington north carolina for joining us and being our uh, featured author of the month we truly appreciate and love you and we hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. And thank you so much. Thank you, Paula. Thank you, Vision. Thank you both for this wonderful opportunity. Bye -bye. All right. Have a good evening, dear. <laughs>